little groom, little boom. So most of you are aware of what I've been speaking about on the pod recently regarding DJ Academics' friend and sometimes co-host on his live streams called Little Boom. He's in a bit of a sticky situation. So he got accused, no, randomly somebody shared a Facebook post about him being arrested for allegedly touching up kids in a target somewhere. It was like an old post from 2021. Um, Adam22, who's always on the No Jumper Reddit, saw it and then decided to post about it, right? On his own social media feed. So he posted about it on his own social media feed. Everyone decided to go crazy about it because obviously it's kind of crazy news. And then he got involved, Little Boom himself, and denied the allegations. And then when he denied the allegations, the master of all paperwork um 1090 jake decided to get involved and he decided to kind of you know he found the information and now we have direct proof that that situation did happen where little boom did allegedly touch some kids in the supermarket and now to make the situation even worse somebody has shared the body cam footage of his arrest and in the body cam footage of his arrest the officer you can kind of see from her body cam the screens the cctv screens in the target and you can kind of make out what Little Boom has been accused of. This video has gone somewhat viral in my side of the internet. People are talking crazy about it because of how DJ Academics reacted to the whole Little Boom conversation, right? He was very defensive, very dismissive of people's concerns, especially his fans telling him, hey, you have to kind of like disavow this guy, how are you fucking riding with him, whatever it may be. So I'll play the clip of him, you know, basically telling his fans to fuck off. Um, but this is kind of wow. This is DJ Academics responding very, very negatively to fans telling him to fucking, you know, tell Little Boom to go Kadoom. Let's actually see this clip here. Oh my mom's in Discord. You hear one of these weird ass things. Oh no, I love act, but I'm just trying to hold him account. I get your ass on that. Listen, time of war now, nigga. Like, we, we here. Like, what's up? Just address, bro. I'm not, go nigga. You know I could read, right, nigga? I see I type. I'm not talking about boom. I've been told y'all, nigga. I'm not talking about it. I don't know what's going on with it. I'm not about to go off no video about it. This is somebody who has slept in my house, nigga. Me and him will talk. This and third, nigga. None of y'all pressure me to do motherfucking shit, nigga. Like what y'all talking about? You crazy? Boy, y'all gonna respect the game, nigga. Y'all gonna respect me, nigga. Man, put it like this. I don't care what none of y'all niggas say. No, hold on. Let me. I, like some of y'all really be thinking. Like, let me pop my shit. I don't care where you on. Nigga, this whole empire was built because of me, nigga. Stop fucking playing, nigga. I don't care what none of y'all niggas is saying. Like, I'll let y'all rock, run the show for a lot, but nigga, it's, nigga, I'm the person who make the final call, nigga. I'm not talking about boom. Boom, my nigga. I'm going to keep saying that. And by the way, whatever y'all talking about with him, I ain't looking to, I'm going to talk to that nigga first. Period. <laughs> Big up Young Old Vibes. Big up Young Old Vibes. I'm you are literally my co-worker, Roz. Ah! You are on the whole shift. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Big up Young Old Vibes. Big up Young Old Vibes. Yes, yes. Co-worker gang. Co-worker gang. When you going for lunch? What are you having for lunch? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? When you going? Where you going? In the park? Whatever. Parlay. Who's the dickhead? Who's the cool guy? Who's the idiot? What the managers say about that? Did they approve your holiday? Why are they taking so long? Where's my promotion? I can't wait to go home. You know what it is. You know what it is. Big up young old vibes. <laughs> Big up. <laughs> I love those chats. Man. I love those chats. I love them. I love them, bro. I love just egging people on. Like, what? What'd she say? <gasps> no way. She say that. I love egging people on at work. I love it. No way. Nah, really? To you? But you're so nice. How could she say that? Like, yeah, fight, 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 fight. <laughs> oh, I love it, bro. I love it. I love it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I fucking love it. <laughs> no way. They still haven't. Oh my god, but but you'll get but the wedding the wedding is in a month. Oh, I I can't believe it. Hand on the shoulder. Honestly, I just I just can't I just I can't imagine what you're going through right now. <laughs> do you want me to talk? To, do you want me to have a word? Should, should I have a word for you? Do you want me to have a word for you? No, honestly, babe, I don't mind. I really don't mind. You know I'm always here for you. You know it, right? All right. Yeah. 
That's fucked. Anyway, um, it's my train. I've got to leave. So I'll leave you with it, right? But I'll see you tomorrow, babe. All right. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Vibes, vibes, vibes. Anyway, so academics was very apologetic. Um, was very, 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 very supportive of Lil Boom. Refused to comment on it. Kept saying he's my nigga. Kept saying he slept in my house. He's my boy. You know, pedo brothers in crime, allegedly. But now this video has come out. I wonder if he'll change his tune. And then I'm going to give you a really controversial opinion that I have on this whole situation. But let me play the entire clip and then we can continue. On September 19th, 2021, Officers responded to a Walmart safety alert involving a customer groping a minor and taking pictures of a woman bent over. The suspect happened to be the rapper Lil Boom. Officers initiated the investigation with these disturbing details. Oh, right here. Oh, there they are. Yeah, yeah that's them. Too. And you'll see her jump out of the way. Yeah, you know, look how close he is to her. Like, he probably did. Look at that. So... Oh yeah, right there. Okay, pause it. Um, oh, sorry. Um, do I have do I have int do I have internet brain? Do I have incel brain? Do I have first bucket brain? Or has my brain been corrupted by social media? Anytime I see a girl with white nails, I think of like an IG baddie or something. When I see French tips and white nails, the first thing I think about is like, I don't know, is like, um, what's her name? Young Miami. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> big up for your dog. Super chat. Thank PTO you. PTO request. March yeah. 3rd to March 13th. Yeah. Thank you. You know that, but you know that time of thing. You know Wagwan. You know that time of thing. You know it. Big up for your dog. What do you guys think? Am I the only one that thinks that? I can't now see white nails as normal. When I think, when I see white nails, I just think of some woman that has like a crazy BBL and always takes pictures with their back turned. <laughs> That's it. So I think, so what police officer is walking around with like white nails and French tips? Like, no, what do you think? Is that, is that weird to think that? Is she just, is this cop walking around with a crazy BBL? Just arresting people. <laughs> just walking down with a crazy thumper. Or am I, or am I just corrupted? I don't know. Let's continue. Maybe I'm corrupted. I just want to write it down so whenever I write my report. Um, he approaches over, is that, what is that, the tomato, potato? Okay, whatever. Um, approach the produce stand. <laughs> tomato, potato. Come on, babe. You should be able to discern between the potato and the tomato stand. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what is that potatoes or tomato like um, like where did they find these cops bro where did they find them does she have two degrees i don't think so yeah he reaches and grabs younger one she jumps away okay you can play it Lay. Good play. She's like seven. I can read it. It's my handwriting. I can read it. So. Ooh. Sassy. Yeah. Follows. Grabs. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. That is all I need. Officers made contact with the victim's father, who advised that both of his daughters were inappropriately touched. Damn. After further investigation, they observed him exiting the parking lot in a red sedan. The victim. There he is. There he is. Little boom. In the middle of the screen, getting arrested for touching up kids in the fucking supermarket. Can you imagine, bro? The guy's way too young to be into this fucking freak shit. But maybe this is a sign and an indication that he might be into some other darker shit because I can't even fathom a situation where that would ever happen in my life, ever. Do you know what I mean? 
So you have to be into some really scary shit. Yeah, you know I mean, maybe if they do some investigation, they'll find some other stuff that may have happened. But for you to go into a fucking packed target and just sexually assault people is wild, bro. Like, again, it's not an excuse, but you could somehow, you know, the scenario of it happening in a nightclub or something, somewhere dark and whatever, where people can't, whatever. Again, freaky shit, creepo shit, sick shit. But to go to a, to drive to a target and go and, you know, try and grab up a 10 year old that's some wild bro you deserve to be at the bottom of the jail Tim was able to recognize the suspects from twitter and instagram as a known rapper okay. recording okay so um so you know you are going to be placed under arrest okay so i'm not going to put the handcuffs in the back so i'll just put them in the front so just put your hands together like you're praying perfect hey <laughs> put your hands together like you're praying you know <laughs> Yeah, he needs all the prayers, bro. I don't know if, you, I, but I, hopefully God doesn't answer his prayers because you know, you know, you know, who really needs pedos? Sure. Yeah, I actually need that phone. Uh, it's the blue one with the case on it. Perfect. Is that too tight? That actually is that too tight? It's the one with the uh, with the with the rabbit on it. Niggas got a phone with a blue case, with a rabbit blue case. That tells you everything, innit? Man's carrying around phones with, like, kitty bait. That's my phone. All right. Okay. Yeah, I got that one. That, that one. That one. That's the one. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and yeah. hear. No, no, don't worry about it. I'll call you. Yeah. They're taking us from with Yeah, I have to take the phone. So, come So what? He's out with his boy. Doing pedo shit. There's like a little gang. Pedo boy gangs, right? They're what? What are they doing? They're doing drive-by pedo hits. Come over here and go ahead and take a seat in my car. You don't have anything on you, do you? Okay, I'm going to search you real quick. Why would you ask somebody? Oh, I guess it's part of police procedure. Why don't you just search them? Why would you ask somebody if they have something? I don't have anything on me. And then you search them and he has an AK-47 in his back pocket. Just put your hands up here. Just understand if you go into the jail and you have anything, it is a felony, okay? No. Okay, all right. Really? It's a felony. If you go in, if you don't declare you have something and then they find it in jail. Actually, shouldn't the police officer be in trouble more than you? If they can't adequately search you before you go into jail, shouldn't it be them getting reprimanded and not you? Why should you get a felony? They should get a fucking felony. You got me handcuffed. And you are searching my body free with with free will with free reign, and you couldn't find it. You should be in trouble. Your one job is to arrest and find shit. If you can't find the shit, get fired. Why am I being Why am I being in trouble? Because I can hide a blicky in my ass. If you can't find a blicky in my ass, that's your problem, not my problem. It's not my problem. I've got a big ass. It's not my problem. I can fit it in there. Find it in it. I'm not telling you where it is. You find it. And take a seat. Are you going to get the PC for me? Okay. Why does it sound like she's going to go drop off her nephew to school or something? Why does it sound like that? Why does it sound like she's going to drop off her godson to school? At school? Da -da 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 -da. She's like, oh, like, like, she's too chirpy, man. Why go on? <laughs> what's the passcode to your phone don't give it don't give it right am, am, I, am i not mistaken you don't talk to the police always lawyer up and you shouldn't give your passcode right or my or my dumb you should never give your passcode right again i'm a law-abiding citizen i don't get arrested but you shouldn't give your passport your passcode right Am I, am I mistaken? Or should you be giving it? I would never give that. I swear to God, like, what? Password? Get a subpoena, bitch. Get a warrant. Do you know what I mean? Get a fucking warrant. A detective's asking for it. I mean, I guess technically you don't have to. Then don't give it then, bro. 
technically you don't have to. That that was a good play. That was a good play. I'm not gonna lie. I'll give her credit. That's where her training came in. So what's your password for your phone? Hey babe, what's your password? Sorry, hon. What's the what's the num what's the numbers to Sorry hot stuff? What's the Sorry Papi? You know? That was smart for her. That was smart. Like she played it off very well there. Very, very well, but he was a bit on he's he was he was there. He was away. He was away. Do you wanna leave? Okay, give me just a second. Officer Rosa Costa in here just like, what's she doing, man? Do your job, man. Do you not want to give me the passcode or anything? Nah, I want to give you this dick. Okay, so it's just a yes or no. You don't have to give it if you don't want no. to. No! Okay. All right, we're just waiting for the officer to bring me back the paperwork, and then we're going to get going. Oh, yeah, I see you. And then I know we kind of already talked over the phone about the incident, but I want to ask you a couple more questions, okay? Uh, you don't want to talk to me anymore? Okay. <laughs> Yo, how you talk to her on the phone and then when she sees you in real life, you don't want to talk anymore? Now you've got conscious, right? Now you've recognized the gravity of your crimes. Bruh, don't touch kids in supermarkets. It's not that difficult. Grab your produce. Grab your fucking wah wah wee wees, whatever you you guys eat over there, and keep it moving, right? Grab your tater tats and keep it stepping. You don't need to touch kids. Then you have to answer questions in the back of a fucking meat wagon. All right. Shelby, um, so I got his phone. I it just died, but I'm plugging it back up. Gonna put it on airplane mode. He won't give me his password or anything. So, um, but do you so I'm, uh, he won't give me his password or anything. So I'm gonna show him my ass. You know how I told you I got my ass done yesterday. So it's looking kind of plump right now. So I'm gonna show him my ass, and maybe he might just show me his phone. Then you know, black guys and. You know, Hispanic women, you know how black guys are, but, you know, as Latinas and shit. So I might just show him my ass and then he might give me my phone. But if he doesn't show me my ass, then maybe I'll give him a bit of boob or something. I don't really know. Um, Or should I suck his dick? Should I suck his dick? Hello? Hello? <laughs> Do you want me to put it into evidence or give it to you? <laughs> so I just... Okay. Okay. Oh, wait, it just turned back on. Yeah, okay. That's what I figured. Okie dokie. Thank you. Okay, bye. During the investigation, officers were able to locate the vehicle and spoke to the owner, who happened to be the suspect's mother. God damn, bro. This story gets sadder and sadder. Not only is he driving to targets to go and allegedly sexually assault literal children, and teenagers he's also doing it in his mum's car he takes his mum's car on these ride outs he makes his mum complicit in these fucking pedo drive-bys fucking hell bro she acknowledged that her son took the car to walmart and provided a phone number for lil boom who claimed he was just shopping and denied touching anyone Due to the positive identification of the suspect and his admission to being in Walmart on the day of the incident, they believed there was probable cause for two counts of sexual battery. <laughs> he did that shit, in it? He did that shit. <laughs> I'm not one to fucking <laughs> judge a book by his cover. I'm not one to judge a book by his cover, but he did that shit. That guy did that. Whatever he's been accused of, he's guilty.
<laughs> oh, re- shit. As a result, Lil Boom was placed on 12 months of probation, required to undergo a psychosexual evaluation. And imagine having to undergo a psychosexual evaluation. Imagine how much of a wrong in you are. Imagine how, you know, beyond help that you have to go through a psychosexual evaluation. That's how much of a fucking nut job you are. Psychosexual. God damn, bro. Sounds like a good band name. Don't get me wrong, right? Sounds like a good fucking hardcore band name, right? Psychosexual. But it also sounds like the kind of band you wouldn't want to tell people that you listen to, right? You kind of want to, you know, keep it to yourself a little bit, right? Psychosexual. Lord have mercy. And assigned 40 hours of community service. What are your thoughts? Okay, so let's go back to the CCTV footage because I'm still a little bit... I don't know what to make of the CCTV footage, you know? What do we see here? What do we see here? Oh, right here. Oh, there they are. Yeah, yeah so that's Let's see. So we see a picture here of him in the bottom right, left-hand corner, right? Oh no, that's the girls, right? Is that the girls or that's him? I think that's the. That, I think those are the young girls because I think the ten-year-old and the seventeen-year-old that he first touched are sisters. So let's see. Let's play it. Okay, no, no, sorry. That's him there. That's him there allegedly, and those are the two girls. I'm assuming that's the younger one and that's the older one. I'm assuming. So he's approaching them from the back because his defense, his defense is that he brushed them. That's his defense. His defense is like he was walking by, accidentally brushed them and they freaked out and made a, you know, made a meal out of it. That's what his defense is saying. But in my opinion, I don't think it's possible to accidentally brush past a 10 year old to touch a bum. That's just my opinion. I don't know when that's ever happened in my life where I'm walking. I don't know how he's walking in a supermarket. Is he walking with his arms like that? Like swaying from side to side? Or is he like, is he like walking squatting? Like, is he doing the fucking duck walk? Is he fucking, what's that Vogue thing when the people Vogue and they do, is it a duck walk? Is he doing a duck walk? And then like, he's touching their bums. As he's walking in the fucking supermarket. How do you walk by his 10 year old and touch their ass? That's nuts. But that's his defense. So here he is behind them. He's too close, right? For, and again, this is a this is a supermarket. I don't know about you, but when I'm in a supermarket, I don't want to be near anyone. Like if somebody's near you, you kind of like move away. You know what I mean, come on, man, fuck off. It's a big place, right? You just kind of find your own little thing. And you you don't want to be near people. So the fact that he's that near two children or two young girls is like a bit weird, anyway. He's looking around. That's him there. <laughs> you see the way he walked back? You see the way he walked back? <laughs> he's walking back. Like he's walking into a bush. But it's like, bruh, you're in a fucking... Honestly, man, that's that's real psycho shit, isn't it? That's why he's a psychosexual. He went to like... A, a supermarket might be one of the most well-lit places in the world. Maybe outside of Las Vegas. Most supermarkets might be one of the most well-lit places in the world. Lighting everywhere because they want you to fucking see all their wares and they want everything to jump out of you so you can fucking buy it. From a can of fucking sweet corn to a pillow to, some, to a fucking bucket for your mop. Everything is lit. So imagine leaving your house to go to that place to assault abuse people. With cameras everywhere. You are a psychosexual. So here he is, backing up there. You see him backing up a little bit. And then he walks forward. Is he, rec- is he oh, recording yeah, right them? There. Is it me or is he recording them? What do you guys think? It feels like he's recording them, innit? Oh, am I bugging? Let me rewind it a bit more. Does it feel like he's recording them or something? Why is he walking like that? It feels like he's recording them, innit? Like he's got a phone or something here. Oh, yeah, right yeah, there. Okay, like, pause him. Yeah. The fucking, this fucking mamacita's you know, BBL fingers are all over the place here, but let's just continue. Um, uh, sorry, I just want to write it down. So, so it's bad enough he's touching them. He's also recording footage on his... 
No wonder he didn't want her to have the fucking passcode, didn't it? No wonder. That if he if they get the passcode, that phone is fucking f yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever I write my report, um, he approaches over. Is that what is that? The tomato, potato. Okay, whatever. Let's see. Hopefully, um, we can see more of it. Let's hopefully your hand gets out the way soon. Come on, lady, hurry up and write. Picking stuff out. I want to see more of this. Yeah. I think that might be it, though. We can see the footage. Let's see if there's yeah. anything more. Yeah. He reaches. He reaches. Okay, cool. So that's them there, right? That's them there. He's there in the blue, kind of. You can see him over there. And this is the two girls. That's the younger one. And I think that's the older sister there. And grabs younger one. She jumps away. Okay, you can play it. The younger one. Isn't the younger one the first girl there? Not the other one. Play. Oh, am I bugging? Play. So he's, he, that's him there. She's like seven. He's feeling around his trousers. Is he touching himself? I don't know. It's, it's, it's my handwriting. I can and then he walks a little bit towards them, does he? Lingers. He walks, yeah, he walks towards them and then they both walk away. Both girls kind of walk. Hmm. So they both walk away and he's the of course he's got a face mask on, isn't it? Follows. He follows them. Now what's he doing now? Is he following them? Then grabs. Oh no. Is that their mums? Do the two girls go to their mums? Is that their mums? So you see them walking away here, right? They're the two girls. And is that their mum? There's a person here with the with the orange bag that looks like that might be their mum. That's little boom here. He follows them, and then he touches the other girl. Look, he walks past her there, and his hand grazes her bum. Can you see it? He kind of sticks out his hand. Yo, this guy's a fucking pedo. See, he sticks out his hand. He like he touches her. Oh my god! Oh my god, bro! Academics, is that your boy, Ak? Is that your man's? Is that your man's academics? Come on, bro! Come on, bro! Yo, academics, come on! You gotta do better than this, brother. Honestly, I like academics, bro. He's got some good streams. He's a fucking entertaining guy. One of the best, one of the best content creators out there, one of the best live streamers out there, but he's going out real sad. It's not it's, if it wasn't bad enough for that Shayan girl, this young fucking girl, to be ruining his life, stealing a half a million dollars from him in fucking cash, abusing him, turning off his Wi-Fi, you know, jeopardizing and sabotaging in some part his Spotify deal. Now he's backing this guy. You're dying on a hill for this guy. The guy that's walking past 17 and 10 year olds and touching their bums. Then grabs. Oh, come on, man. Come on. How are your arms that far out? Like he's doing star jumps in the middle of Target. Man's doing star jumps next to 10 year olds. Right? This is like that. This is like the pedo version of that scene in Simpsons where Bart and Lisa are having a fight. And they close their arms and they start, close their eyes, sorry, and they start windmilling each other, right? Start swinging their arms over. So, well, if you're getting away of my hands, then I can't be to blame, right? This is like the pedo version of it, right? Well, my arms, I'm, it's a free country. I can move my arms where I want to move my arms as an excuse to touch kids. Like, yuck, man. Fucking yuck. Fucking yuck. Look, he walks by. He literally walking by there. You can see him there with the hair. And then see his hand does that. His hand touches her. Fucking hell, bro. Yeah. And she turns around. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Um. What can we say? What can we say? What can we say?
You get what I'm saying? So I know some people feel like maybe I like I don't really give a fuck about most of this right now. Shout out to my nigga Lil Boom. I don't know nothing about nothing. I ain't talking about nothing. I'm chilling. Y'all niggas can get mad. All y'all fucking won. It's a big act, nigga. Y'all niggas gonna deal with it. Nigga, I came in the game like this thing. I'm gonna go out like this. That's how it's gonna be. Anyway, I think I addressed it. We got a few. That is hypocrisy at its finest, right? Because he was the first one to be barking, justifiably, rightly so. When the Diddy and Cassie thing went down, screaming into the microphone about how much of a weirdo, creep, abuser, rapist Diddy was. Also, he's the person to be screaming and shouting and kicking Blueface's back in when he goes through his nonstop drama with Creshawn. He's there throwing jabs at little baby, always constantly kicking Meek Mill when he's down. But then when something happens to his boy, very questionable shit like this, suddenly he doesn't want to say anything. So he doesn't want to talk about it, which... I can somewhat understand. Big up Wingus Dingus. Appreciate you, brother. Nonce energy. Nonce energy from Fat Tech. <laughs> exactly. Pure nonce energy. 100% nonce enabling. You know what, actually? As you said that, you know what's worse than being a nonce? Turning a blind eye to noncery. Turning the other way to noncery is probably the only thing that's second only to being a nonce. Nothing actually beats being a nonce, but if you turn a blind eye to it, you're just as bad unfortunately so i don't make the rules that's what is written in the fucking book of not being a nonce you know what i mean don't turn a blind eye to it it's on page one uh big up wingers Dick, wingers mcdingus appreciate you brother but you know what part of me thinks this is my controversial opinion i don't think you should be ever put in a situation or you should ever publicly cancel your friends i think if they're your friend you should move accordingly in real life by not talking to them anymore. If they do, if they do something that you think is morally ir 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 irreprehensible, right? Irreprehensible, whatever that fucking word is, right? Or morally objectionable, or whatever to you, or something that just doesn't vibe with you, or whatever it may be, you should make amends or make adjustments in real life. You shouldn't need to publicly cancel your friends. Because I sometimes feel like some people who publicly cancel people it's almost like a weird virtue signaling thing. Hey, look at this guy and look at the terrible thing that they did. I'm going to publicly counsel them to make me look better. But it's not really me. It's not really a moral judgment. I'm not standing on anything. I'm just using their plight as a way to make myself look good, which I don't like. Fuck all that shit. Don't use somebody's fucking whatever situation they're going through to prop yourself up. But if that's your actual friend, you should obviously chastise correct pull them up blast them whatever in private you shouldn't need to do it online but i think at the core as humans we should all have lines we should all have things that no one could ever come back from and in my opinion i've always said i can forgive murder before i can forgive you touching a kid i can forgive murder before i can forgive you raping somebody that sort of shit is, you, there's no coming back from it, for me, personally. doesn't matter who it is. There's no coming back for it. Murder, I can, I can understand. You know what I mean? Some people are fucking annoying. Some, some people need to be, you know, well, bye-bye, go fund me, up in the sky. You know what I mean? Some, some people need to be bye-bye. So I can understand that. But rape and touching kids, that's never going to fly in my book. And I think you should have a line where you kind of, if someone crosses that, it's over. I think, unfortunately, nowadays, most people don't have lines. Most people move the goalpost based on who it is, based on if they like them, based on a situation, based on what they can do for them, their principles, their morals, right? Um, their standards, they're malleable, right? They're ever shifting, like sand, right? <laughs> like wind. It just moves where it moves. That's the issue most people have. So I think that's happening with, with, with um, academics. Even though he talks with bass in his voice about other people and he's very judgmental, very critical, 
he doesn't actually have a moral compass. He doesn't actually have any principles. He doesn't actually stand for anything, which is why he's willing to turn a blind eye or pretend nothing's going on with his boy. That's my theory. Because he doesn't actually stand for anything, so it's easy to do so. Now, again, like I said, he does need to cancel his friend, but I feel like this is hypocrisy at its finest if you can talk about everybody else, but you refuse to talk about your boy. And I also feel like it's one of the weirdest heels to die on. Isn't this a strange hill to die on? My friend has been accused of being a pedo, and now there's there's police reports, there's you taking a plea deal, there's alleged confessions, and now there's video evidence of you allegedly doing what you've been accused of doing. And this is the hill you want to die on. Bizarre one, isn't it? If you want to defend, if you want to defend your friend, I don't think defending pedophilia is a way to go. You could defend your friend by saying, "Hey, he made a big mistake." but I'm going to be there for him as a friend and I'm going to make sure that he gets his life together. Um, you know, he has to earn back my trust, whatever it may be, that way. But like, just pretending like that didn't happen or trying to excuse it like he doesn't care is very odd behaviour. Very odd. Very odd behaviour. Very strange way to kind of go about dealing with that type of shit. And if anything, another example as to why, you know, the guy's in a strange place, maybe, career-wise, act, just in general, you know? Um, because this video, as well as another one, that's really fucking egregious. And I feel like this is going to be interesting to watch from afar because I feel like academics is playing with fire here with his fans because this isn't... I don't feel like the general public is that pissed off about it because I feel like the general public probably doesn't care about him. I think his fans are the ones that are maybe a bit more let down. I don't think the general public really cares, really and truly. But I think he's playing with fire with his fans when he says shit like this. But I could tell y'all, fuck off and suck dick and y'all still gonna be here. You know why? Nobody does it better than me. I'm sorry. Sorry. Nobody does it better than me. I'm sorry. Who else? If it ain't me, who y'all about to watch? Give me some names. If it ain't me, who y'all about to watch? Y'all tell me. I think he's playing with fire. I think he's tempting his fans or goading his fans into a response. Because if they if they decide to all drop him and not follow him, he's fucked. I don't think he has a lot. I don't think academics has casual fans. I think like most content creators, he has hardcore fans who ride with him. But if he decides to poke the bear too much, if he decides to tempt fate, they might they might answer his call. Cool. They might say, "All right, cool. You think you think you can just." say whatever and we're going to still be there watch we're not there anymore i think he has to be very very careful very 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 careful because i think academics is also getting to that point where he's not very media friendly he's not very brand friendly anymore he's getting to a point where he's a bit his reputation is a bit sullied he's a bit of a i won't say a negative person but he's not really looked at favorably so he's not going to get brand deals as much as he was getting in the past so he's going to rely a lot more on his fan base to kind of support him. So if you keep treating your fans like this or talking to them this way, don't be surprised if they pull you up on it. Don't be surprised if they kind of call your bluff. You think you can get away with what you can get away with and act the way you want to act with them? They might say, all right, cool, watch. And they might not be there tomorrow when you stream. Be very, 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 very careful. So that was obviously concerning. Another thing that was really concerning too was this clip. Somebody posted this clip on the academic subreddit of academics' on and off girlfriend talking, weirdly enough, um, on live stream about their situation. And the first thing that struck me was just how young she sounds, right? This girl called Shay, who's the girl that's behind most of academics' most embarrassing moments. She's the one that leaks all the pictures about him and all this other shit, right? It's, the first thing that struck me is how young she sounds. And then the other thing that struck me was her revealing in part that academics didn't get dropped but no he didn't they didn't mutually he didn't mutually agree to leave Spotify it's actually more so that Spotify decided to drop him because he wasn't fulfilling the obligations of the deal and guess why he wasn't fulfilling the obligation of the deal because he was spending loads of time with this Che girl he was you know she was cutting off his wi-fi whenever they had a, an argument so he couldn't fucking stream and do his shows so he lost the spotify deal in part because of this girl she stole money from him 
She allegedly abused him. She allegedly cheated on him a million times. Allegedly hit his mum. And they're still together. <laughs> this guy that was always hard on thoughts. He's always screaming at OnlyFans girls and calling them whores and sluts and shit. And just, you know, being a real misogynistic pig. He's out here getting absolutely played with by a literal teenager. I think she might be, oh no, by, by a very young girl. Maybe in her early 20s. This girl in her early 20s has academics wrapped around her little finger. It's absolutely hilarious. Let's play the clip. Why would y'all see me like taking shots and doing all this shit? But it's kind of weird because nobody brought up the story about the rape situation, but except for him, like he brought it to the. So he brought it up because. So that girl talking now at the top is Che. That is Academics' girlfriend. And the other girl, I think, is a fan or something. And they're having a, you know, they're having a fucking conversation over IG Live. But the girl that you're hearing now is Academics' girlfriend. He, was he, felt, he felt like you was going to bring he, it up. Yeah. Yes. He was like, oh, you're going to expose me one day. I might as well air all this shit out. He's trying to do it at the house. I cut the Wi-Fi and all that. He went to his studio and did all that other shit. Now I love how she said that. I cut the Wi-Fi and all that. That's how you know she's toxic, isn't it? That's not normal. Because we have an argument, you don't get to just cut my Wi-Fi. <laughs> Babe, like, let's talk. <laughs> Babe, let's talk. Why you just cut? You can't just cut my Wi-Fi <laughs> whenever we have a little tit for tat. When I don't, when I forget to wash the dishes, you can't just cut my fucking Wi-Fi. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Like, can we have a conversation, please? Can we at least maybe argue? Let's argue at least. Let's at least shout at each other. Like, don't just cut the Wi-Fi off. Like, fucking hell, man. I haven't even got a lot of data. You know I don't have good data. You know the signal in here is not great. Come on, man. <laughs> you now I brought him extra problems. Like, you didn't have to say any of that. Now you look bad. Like, you said I did all this crazy shit to you and you're still with me. Like, that's crazy. That's why I said I could tell that he don't really feel like it's fuck you and X, Y, Z. He had, like, he had like a 10... <laughs> He had a ten million dollar deal with Spotify. The shit dropped, and did you hear that? Academics had a ten million dollar deal with Spotify. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the Spotify deal was like, was it called? I think it was. It was. A, it was a show where he had interviews. And according to academics, because again, I watched a lot of his content. Academics said that him and Spotify decided to part ways. Because they were demanding too much from him. They were asking him to do loads of interviews with artists that he didn't really care for. So he didn't want to be made to do more than he was a black but more he more than he was obligated to do. So he left the deal. I always thought that was a bit fishy. I was like, why would you like cause me as a quote unquote creative that doesn't believe in selling out, I always believed in the notion of like selling out with like what's it class, but selling out in a way where you get money from the overground to feed your underground projects so maybe you do a placement with a big brand maybe you do a campaign with a big brand but then you use that money to kind of you know put more fire more energy more resources behind your projects that you actually care for it's almost similar like fashion photographers right fashion roadman would know this most fucking um campaigns by like for Zara, HM, all these fucking high street brands are done by really acclaimed photographers, but they never put their name on it, right? It's usually done up, you know, kind of like nameless. But usually big photographers will do those campaigns for HM and Zara because those campaigns pay really well, but then they'll do magazine editorials for like, you know, ID or like whatever fashion magazine exists out there, system and shit. They'll do those things for free or for the exposure or for a look or for the portfolio. So you use the money from the big corporations to feed your kind of underground personal, you know, pursuits and passion projects. So when I heard academics say he voluntarily walked away from Spotify, I was like, oh, that made no sense. If Spotify is giving you a check, if they're giving you a salary, like that's sick because that takes a lot, all the pressure off of your other stuff. So you can maybe use that money to do other cool things, maybe experiment, whatever it may be. Do you know what I mean? So I never really understood why he would give up the Spotify thing, especially because I always, I always felt as if as well, like academics isn't really a good interviewer. Don't get me wrong, but I still think it's important for him to have a show where he gets to interview people because he has a different perspective and he has a different sort of outlook on the industry from most outlets out there that are mostly like industry based. They're kind of really part of the corporate 
machine, juggernaut, whatever it may be. He's a little bit indie, a little bit in his own thing. So I think it was quite important, even though the interviews were never that great, for him to have a platform because maybe he gets to interview other people that we won't see. And maybe he just asks different questions, whatever it may be. So I always thought the Spotify thing was shaky. So it's interesting that she said it was a $10 million deal. And most likely he lost it because, you know, she keeps cutting off his Wi-Fi. So you have to, what, keep buying a new router, having somebody come out. Like, so you're wasting time. You're not getting the shows out on time. And I'm assuming if you've got a deal with Spotify, there are some deliverables that are non-negotiable. If they give you $10 million, you if they tell you to produce six shows, you have to do six shows. If they want those shows every fucking Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you have to drop them those days. If you don't, you know the fucking deal. So that's probably what happened. Um, now his only income is like being on social media and doing streams and shit. Like, Imagine this girl talking about income when she has no job. <laughs> she's criticizing how academics makes his money, but she's sucking on his, she's su you know, Sucking off the bosom, whatever, uh, you know, whatever that term is. Honestly, this is a, such, such a toxic relationship. But it makes me laugh because she's so young and academics isn't that young. So it's just hilarious to see him getting twanged, getting manipulated by this young girl. It's fucking hilarious. But why, why destroy the person that you're with? Like, he's saying all this crazy shit about me. But, not but I feel like it's vice versa too. You say a lot of fuck shit about him he say fuck shit about you he does interviews with famous people like he's doing interviews with vlad like other famous people like you're he's talking mad crazy about me but he tells me like not you feel like anything. you feel like because he doing it on a bigger platform that he's taking it far farther or is yes. working imagine not being able to talk about your girlfriend on the pl on a public platform if you so wish Imagine her saying, if you talk about me, I'm a cut off your Wi-Fi. If you talk about me, I'm a sell your fucking dick. I'm a send your dick pic to Adam22. Imagine. Like, can I can I moan? Can I express my feelings on the podcast about like how tough it is? Like what? Huh? Like imagine your boyfriend going on a famous platform talking the worst shit about you when y'all beefing and like still being with you. Like, I mean, I agree about the Aunt Glizzy um interview that he did like when he came back i i heard like i was listening to it and while we was in the car and i'm like why he why he got like somebody going in on his relationship and his girl when i know for a fact in the next couple streams um uh, you're gonna see her walking by or you know he was I'm with me the next day <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I can't. I don't. I don't know. So only you know him. He's for a hater. Girl, so I don't get it. He's a hater. Literally, and he knows like this relationship shit is getting views. That's why he's saying all this crazy shit about me, but still being with me every day. I don't get it. And why do you feel like you still with him? I mean, like, when you in love with somebody, like, you, you, you excuse a lot of stuff. So, basically, academics and this girl are Crayshon and fucking Blueface. I'm going to be honest. Like, if I wasn't in love with him and I only cared about the money, like, we would have been done, to be honest. Mm, the money helps. Let's be real. The money helps because she's not with Axe for his fucking good looks or for his irresistible charm, is she? Let's be real. The money does help, right? The guy is like a multi-millionaire, legitly. And he doesn't really have many dependables, right? Like, it's just him and his mum, basically, right? One of the rare black people that you'll meet that isn't sending back hundreds of thousands to family abroad. So he's got a lot of disposable income. I think that helps, right? Getting a G-Wagon for your birthday is pretty nice, I reckon. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, you know, people are going to assume that you only with him for one thing. So yeah. it's not... It's, it's not much that either of y'all could say that's going to make the the anybody look at your relationship. There she is. There she is. Che Glizzy, the one that's holding academics down. Walk one, girl. In a positive light, especially after all the accusations and all the back and forths and breaks up, breakups. They were so saying I, negative stuff about me before we even went like public basically anyway you get the gist of it so um again some people would say 
this is academics is karma. Again, I don't believe in karma, but some people would say this about all the negative stuff he's put out there, how it's how he's spoken bad about certain people, blah 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 blah. I just think this is just more of a situation of a guy that doesn't really have much experience with girls finding one girl and unfortunately that one girl being not the best companion for him at this time poor timing obviously lack of experience is more the reason why i think so it's less to do with you know anything else i think it's more to do with the fact that he doesn't really have much experience with girls doesn't really have much life experience in general and unfortunately he met a girl that although she's very young she's very wise beyond her years you know she seems to be very clocked on she seems to know how to run, you know, run guys' pockets. She knows how to, like, make them fall in love. You know, that kind of shit. Like, she's very grown in that respect. So he's just unlucky that he bumped into this girl. And she made him, f she made academics feel like he's fucking Rick Ross, right? She made him feel like a fucking boss. And now he doesn't want to let her go. Even though she's legitimately his biggest op. She's one of his biggest ops. Way more than Meek Mill. Make way more than Little Baby, way more than Metro Boomin, way more than Vic Mensa, way more than Rory or more. That Shay Glizzy girl is the biggest reason, is the biggest um op that he has, and probably the one person who, if someone could bring down the house of academics, is Shay Glizzy. So he has to watch his P's and Q's. He really needs to be very careful because if there's one person that can end it all for him and literally get his lights turned off, it's her. But hey. You know, when you're in love, when you're P-U-S-S-Y whipped, there's no convincing you otherwise. And I think most of you guys will know this. Most of the guys in the stream chat who've had friends who've fallen madly in love with girls who are very bad for them, there's no convincing them that that person's not a good fit. You just have to let it play out and be there for your friend when it all falls apart. There's nothing you can say to convince, to, to, to kind of talk them, you know, to get through to them they're just not gonna have it they're not gonna have it so you just you just have to wait and then you know when the inevitable happens you're gonna be there for your friend like we all are but we've all experienced it. i'm sure we have and that's what happened with act but unfortunately he doesn't really have any friends you know or the friends he does have they're like little boom you know what i mean imagine taking relationship advice from a guy that's touching kids in supermarkets <laughs> could never be me bro could never be me